Back to News Views. I'm Judy Sue. Joining me now are Dr. Colleen Cicchetti, a child and adolescent psychologist with Lori Children's Hospital, and Dr. David Rakowski, president of Wellington Counseling Group. Good morning to the both of you. Thank you so much for joining us. So now we're going to talk about sort of the mental health component to this discussion that we're having. I know it is hard for us to address exactly what happened in Texas from a distance. And there is a strong argument being made that in this case, it was domestic violence that really escalated. So so let's go beyond that scope and expand a little bit. When we look back at some of the other events that have happened, mental health does play into the conversation when it comes to, you know, gun violence in some cases. So let's talk about that. When when you see something like this happen in Texas or in other instances, what is the conversation you would like us to have as a society, as, as a family, about what is going on? Colleen, maybe you can start. Sure. Um, I think for me, what I really want to highlight is just the notion that we don't know what is going on in an individual in those kinds of situations, like you said. But what we really want to be thinking about are two things, I think. One is, as a parent, if we're talking about how to talk to our kids, how do we talk to kids about the scary thing that happened, and how do we try to start to recreate that safety network and that protective shield for kids when they're feeling scared? So we have to manage our own fear and anxiety around that before we have these conversations with our kids and ask them, what are they thinking? What are they hearing? What are their concerns or questions? So that's one piece. I think the second piece is just the more general question of mental health access in our country in general. My perspective is that there's a lot that can be done much, much earlier around recognizing signs and symptoms of distress, um, being really mindful about the stigma associated with mental health so that even when families might be aware of something going on with their child or teachers are seeing concerns, we're not always having those kids get services. So a lot of my work, I work at Larry Children's, but most of my work is in the community and I'm really interested in how do we educate folks that are with kids all day long to recognize signs and symptoms, to build kids capacity to regulate their emotions, to connect them to services if that's what they need. Um, and we're not doing such a good job of that. We think that about 20% of kids in our country who need mental health services are getting them. Well, access is so important. And, and I think our society is just finally struggling with, with the access uh, aspects of it. But attitude is so important too. How you model that attitude for your children at the kitchen table, for your students at schools. As physicians, how do you introduce your patients to the idea that mental health is something you can avail yourself of that is going to be health promoting and not just something you run to when you are out of resources? Um, you know, it's something that, that I'm, I'm lucky to say that in my clientele, most of the time uh, we have people who are in their 20s, 30s, and, and up into 60s and 70s in my case. Um, these are people who self-select to be in therapy because they want to somehow to better their lives or keep their, their connections tighter with their family and friends. But having said that, um, there's been a shift, and I'm positive, I think it's a positive shift. Just last night I was speaking to a fellow who's uh, 38 years old, who was raised in a pretty well-to-do Dallas suburb, and he told me that when he was in school, if you were in therapy, you just didn't talk about it, just mm. you weren't supposed to. And I told him that I have adolescents who will answer the phone in the middle of a session. I don't recommend doing that, but sometimes <laughs> they will, because they're adolescents. And they'll say, hey, hey, Bobby, uh, I can't talk, I'm in therapy. This is not something that I grew it's up with. It's more of an open yeah, discussion now. It is. Yeah. So it is changing, thank goodness, and it needs to change more. My other general question I think asking for maybe all of our viewers um, um, watching when something like this happens, we have this discussion. At what point do we recognize that our daily stresses, right? We all have our daily stresses of job and family and kids yeah. and maybe taking care of elderly parents. Um, maybe what, at what point do we go from I just need a break to maybe I need some help? I, I think we need to give ourselves permission to, to take that time. Therapy doesn't have to be something you do your whole life. I mean, my, my, I think, best therapies that I have done with, with adults are people who come in for a couple months and they stop, maybe they'll come back in a year. They're working on pieces of their life one at a time and then they're going on living their lives. I mean, I think some people have the, the, uh, the wrong idea that you have to be in it for life if you're going to be in it. And somehow you have to have medications and all this. And really, sometimes it could just be conversations you have with someone for a couple of months or a year or two, and, and that improves your life and how you function with all these stresses that you're talking and, about. And I'm going to finish up with Colleen, maybe yeah. talking about when it comes to our kids, do we, are there 
are there signals that we're looking for? Are there, you know, signs that we're looking for? Well, I think we have, there are definitely signs and symptoms of kids starting to have distress. So I think two things. I think one is to open up that door to say all of us need strategies for managing difficult situations. There's ways that we can teach kids some mindfulness. There's ways that we can teach self-regulation, being able to talk about your feelings, being able to say to someone, I need some help. Those are skills we should be teaching all kids. But then there's also sort of, you know, as that, when does that red flag go off? Yeah. And I think for kids, what we're often looking for is a change in their behavior, maybe more withdrawal, not enjoying the things they used to enjoy. So if they were really active kids, they, they, they start switching that. They're not playing, they're not functioning in school as well. They're not enjoying the activities. Um, they're spending more time alone in their room. They seem moodier. And I think what I would, you know, kind of reflect is that having that conversation earlier, if you are concerned, you know, we often, as a parent, we only have one or two, maybe four or five kids max, but your pediatrician, the school social worker, your teacher saying, I'm a little concerned, what's going on with my child? Not being afraid to ask that, because often if we have that conversation, we'll find that there are other adults that are concerned too, and if we can be more proactive and get them support, we're gonna see a much better outcome. Well, hopefully we are starting some of that conversation by having this segment. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Now let's go back to the news desk.